and hello and welcome back to the channel I've just been clubbing now today I am Braggy I am your host and I am a Viking oh yes and we all love a good folk tale and as you know I am a teller of folk tales and I'm also a scold a Viking poet and at some point I will tell you some Viking poetry on this channel. So bear with us on that one. Now today I am here to tell you an old English folk tale. Although this will be classed as a fable. And we all love a good fable. A good story with a moral meaning to it. And today's folk tale is quite an unusual one. And one we have not told on the channel. For today, our folk tale features the character of the White Christ, as we would know as Jesus. Now, this folk tale is called The Owl Was a Baker's Daughter. And this is an old folk tale from the county in England, or as the Anglo Saxons would say, Ingerlander from the county of Gloucestershire, a county I have been to many times. They make great cheese there, and oh, we all love cheese. Now, one day, for some strange reason, the saviour, or as we would call in the Viking times and the times of the Anglo-Saxons who lived in England, England, the White Christ, was walking. He must have been bored and fancied a walk in the beautiful countryside. And he was walking down a lane. And all morning he's been walking out. And he was getting hungry and getting ready to eat. And of course we all know that Jesus, the White Christ, he loved a good loaf of bread. And as we say on this channel, well, that is another story. And the Jesus, the white Christ, was walking along, as he does, with his nice beard and the long, long white clothing he used to wear. And as he was getting more hungry for food, he came to a small village, or as the Anglo-Saxons would call, in Old Saxon, Vlani village. And this village was, well, it was a nice place. It had a few long houses. A few people lived there. In the centre of the village, there was a big, giant mead hall. And the White Christ walked past that. He was not thirsty for some mead, but he was very hungry. And at the end of the village, there was an old long house. And at the front of the long house was a shop, a baker's. And there he found an old woman, an old lady, baking. And he went up to this there lady, he knocked on some wood. He said, hello, I'm, I'm very hungry, I, I'm the White Christ, and I'm very hungry today, can you sort me out with some bread please? He was very polite. And the old woman said, oh, of course I can. And immediately she got a massive piece of dough. And this was a very rich dough, for it had lots of seeds in the dough. And they often put seeds in to bulk out the bread. And she was about to put the bread, the dough, in the bread oven. When she was suddenly reprimanded by her daughter, her old dossier, as, as we would say in Anglo-Saxon. And... She immediately grabbed the dough and said, well, that piece of dough is far too big. And she grabbed a bit of the dough from the corner and she made a smaller ball of dough. And then she went outside to an outbuilding, which was open to the elements, but had a roof of shingles, wooden slates. And within that building was two very old bread ovens. And she got this small piece of dough and she put the dough inside the bread oven. But immediately something very strange happened. 
In fact, we could almost say it was supernatural, for this little piece of dough suddenly swelled and grew into the most enormous size, an enormous piece of bread. It was a grand loaf. But the dough, however, was so big that she handed it, the old woman, to the right Christ, the Saviour, as this tale calls him. And whereupon the baker's daughter cried out, and she cried out these words, Hey you! Hey you! Hey you! She said that three times. And it sounded like an owl. I'm ah, sure you must agree with me. Which owl-like noise probably induced the saviour for her wickedness to transform her into an owl. The bird of the sound she was making. And ever since that day the daughter remained an owl for her wicked sins. And as we say, that is the end of the story. And we all love a good folk tale on this channel. But let's talk about bread ovens. Because we all know in the modern world that we live in, that every kitchen, if you're lucky, have a, has an oven. But you may be asking yourself, well braggy, can you describe and tell us what an Anglo-Saxon or a Viking bread oven would look like. Well, yes I can, for I have worked on made one many, many moons ago. Now, the first thing you'll do is you'll go and find a nice spot in a field where you know there is some very nice and fine clay. And you'll get your wooden shovel and you will dig the clay up and you'll get a massive pile of it, a few good sacks. And then you'll put your sack on your back and you'll carry it back to your longhouse, to the place where you're going to make the bread oven. And the first thing you'll do, you'll dig in the ground a round circle and you'll make a layer, a thick layer of this nice clay. And then you'll go out and you'll find a willow tree and if you're lucky, it will be spring, when the willow is fresh and more manageable. And you'll get a number of lengths of willow. And you will craft a dome, weaving it in and weaving it out, and sticking the willow in the wet clay. And once the dome of willow is made, you would then get the rest of the clay and you would start to layer the clay on the dome and then you would think about making some kind of a doorway and you'd make some loops of willow again you'd weave some more willow in and then you would cover this little doorway with some more clay but you have not finished for you need to set the clay and make it hard and dry so you'll get some nice twigs some kindling and you'll make a fire but a very small fire inside the bread oven to very slowly over a few days heat up the clay and dry the clay and eventually you'll have a nice bread oven and then when your oven is ready you'll get some more tricks some more kindling and you'll make a small fire to heat up the oven and then you would scrape all the bits of ash and the hot coals out and then you would put your dough in the oven and then over a couple of hours your dough would rise and you will have some nice tasting bread which will go down very nice with a good horn of mead. So I do hope you like the folk tale and I do hope you like my little bit of bonus information about Anglo-Saxon bread ovens. Oh yes, I'm very hungry now for some Anglo-Saxon bread with lots of seed. So until the next time, we meet again 
on this channel. I am forever your host. I am Braggy. I am the son of Magnar. And yes, please leave a comment. And if you are new to the channel, then I urge you to go and click and subscribe. But please don't forget to go and click the notification bell. Now by doing that, you'll always be notified when we publish, when we premiere, and when we live stream, which I will be doing so soon again. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Drink last hell and ich thank you thee. I thank you for watching. Oh yes. I love the good folk tale. I'm going now. I've got to go and search for Eggle. He's around somewhere, but I just can't find him. Come on, Eggle, where are you? Are you playing hide and seek again?